Okay, have and have not fans, there is some good news I want to start this video off with. That is, I was off work today because I work Saturday of this week. Went to the dentist earlier today and got my last two fillings done. So no more cavities, no more dentist trips for at least a few weeks. So that's good. More money in my pocket. T for healthy. Meaning... I won't have much standing in the way of me doing these videos on a regular basis. I know I have four videos I did last week. I didn't have time to post because of the 4th of July Day weekend, as well as it being finals week for my online classes. I started two more courses on this Monday. I have one more semester to go, then I'm done with my second master's degree, then I'm done with school. That's it. So, just wanted to jump in this video and just say the have and have not episode that came on Tuesday of this week. Uh, I mean, it's only been three episodes in so far of part two of season four. Is to personally, this was the best episode we've seen out of the three so far. I really think this was a great episode. Honestly, I don't think I had many problems with it. I really don't think I had any issues or major issues where I say, "Hey, this doesn't make sense." I mean, the first it seemed to me it seemed like an episode that's longer than the average episode, but it wasn't. My first instinct was saying that the episode was dragging along at the beginning where it was Pearl, Hannah, and Benny. I didn't think it dragged. Honestly, it felt like a time to develop some characters in terms of, you know, how Pearl interacts with older people or people around her age group. I did like that one moment when she was describing Quincy and he, she said the color uh, African-American. I thought that was a little nice touch right there to show that she really is a Southern Belle type, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, that was good. I did like that. I did like that. Uh, the fact that, you know, when she revealed that Benny was her son when Hannah was talking to Pearl and then she went back to the house, I don't think those two are going to be talking anytime soon. But again, nice character development. And the fact that Hannah went into full detective mode, like, no, 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 I work for a woman like that who's old, has nothing better to do than the people watch with the cameras and everything. So Benny knows that he needs to move that body. I don't know how, because if I'm not mistaken, not only is he six feet under, but he has like what um, liquid cement and everything up there. How the heck is he going to dig him up? And the people saying Quincy isn't dead. He's been in the ground for what? Maybe a couple days now. I, I think he's dead. I don't think it's going to be a Michael Jackson thriller. Like when they dig him up or when the moon is full, he's just going to magically appear and start dancing in the streets. And then Pearl's going to have a heart attack. Uh, I don't know, but what I mean, the show, I will say this, the has and the have nots has some plot holes that make no sense. So if Quincy came back alive, I wouldn't be surprised, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I'm mad, what I, here's what I'm most mad about. I had a video titled, where is Quincy Jr.? And I made that after last week's episode revealing that he was in foster care and I theorized that it was with Erica's parents. Remember, her stepdad, if I'm not mistaken, is a pastor. And they take in kids. For example, her kids who, you know, hate her apparently based off what her parents tell them about her. But she figures for the best because they aren't part of the life that she runs. So I do like that aspect of, you know, well, then again, Candace said he, she didn't really confirm that Quincy Jr. was with Erica's parents. But... I kind of think she is. I think I think that Quincy Jr. is in good hands. Okay, so the episode itself, yeah, it really did feel long. There were two moments where, I'll put it this way, I felt the most powerful moment, no doubt, was the end of the episode where Hannah goes to Catherine's house with the detectives and the cops and whatnot. And they, well, he says that Wyatt is dead and she collapses down the stairs and Hannah comes rushing. Hands down, Renee Lawless. I mean, she just steals every scene that she is in. I mean, again, just it was a powerful scene. Honestly, one of the most powerful scenes out of the entire series so far. And again, we're in part two of season four. So the entire series, I think this is one of the best moments. Uh, not for good reason, being that her son is dead, but just incredible acting right there. I really did enjoy that moment. Then two other moments that, I mean, okay. So Catherine, when she finds out Wyatt is dead, that's the most powerful moment. And again, ha kudos to Hannah. She, she'll have your back. She'll have your back. Funniest moment, the exchange between Veronica and Benny. It just reminded me of um, the episode where Hannah walks in on Veronica and Benny. David shows up to get his truck. She, he leaves. And then Hannah makes Veronica wait outside for a car. 
and then they have an exchange going back and forth on the front of the house. That reminded me of that where her and Benny are going at it. Two crazy people just going at it, and I, I don't I don't even know what to say to that. It was just hilarious. I mean, obviously Veronica not needing Benny to make David jealous because if she needed to make him jealous, he she would have went for somebody else. So that was hilarious. Then when Benny undid his pants, I'm like, really, dude, really? But again, just hilarious scene. I don't think those. Two, I mean, I. Again, you if you follow my videos and vlogs, I never thought those two were together or a thing. And as Veronica said, she just used them for sex. So, honestly, I don't see it happening again. So, to all the Veronica or Benica fans, I mean, if you have solid facts or evidence to which you feel support those two getting back together, please let me know because I'd be interested to hear it. You know, hear it. I don't think she's pregnant by Benny. That would be an interesting plot twist, but I don't think so. But, yeah, I don't think that those two are going to do anything else again because Benny's more concerned about getting his phones back on. But as Veronica said, I don't think she's going to, you know, tell David to turn the phones back on. But if he don't get the phones back on, he's not going to have any toes to make money to pay for the place. But, again, in two weeks' time, if Cat, I mean, excuse me, if Candace signs those papers with the bank and she doesn't have the money in 14 days, he's going to lose it anyway. So, uh, lose-lose situation there. I think my favorite moment favorite moment of the episode let's see here okay uh honorable mention just because landon again he represents one of us viewers like if any of us were on the haves and the have nots as like a regular person and we see what's going on everybody's either getting killed they have secrets packed up and gone i think that landon might be gone for good because uh excuse me maggie was the only reason that he was staying in savannah for the campaign he was going back to atlanta so maggie's killed he doesn't trust jeffrey candace is two-faced tried to kill him yeah he's gone i think he's gone for good jennifer she's either going to be killed by Catherine if she makes good on her promise but again the fact that hannah's there with her may reduce the hot-headedness but i don't know i mean Catherine is going to i mean i don't think Catherine is one to not live up to her promises or Jennifer will be like, I pull a landing and get away, but I doubt that. Next week looks good because Hannah's going to go talk to Jim, so that should be interesting. And again, in another video I did last week, I theorized that Hannah was going to be the one to tell Jim because Han, I mean, Catherine will be the only one to trust her. That you're the only person I trust to get the job done. So, whew. wow, just make sure I cover everything in the video. I mean, again, it was pretty much introduction of the episode was when Hannah and Benny were at Candace's house then you transition to Veronica and Benny later on and my favorite part of the episode the part that I just watched time and time again was David visiting uh, Jim in the jail and then they have a the frenemy moment that was that was pretty cool I mean it, it just shows how different women and men are in terms of you know guys we can fight but we just make up you know almost instantaneously but hey I'll get your ass next time but it, it was really funny to see those two joke around and it looks like it's confirmed that you know Jim did cancel the hit on Veronica because I don't think he will be one to joke about Amanda like he might say something sarcastic you know to try to get you to think one thing but I don't think he would use the name of his deceased daughter you know just you know so easily i think he really did call the, call off the hit but that goes back to a couple of videos i made which i've already posted you know in regards to was melissa the one to put the hit on veronica did veronica call a hit herself but strategize for it to end in the death of maggie day so those links are in the description below and i will make another video since my mouth is really feeling bad i mean i wasn't numb for hours and hours and hours i only had two last feelings to get done so sitting down right now i'm just doing my best to do as many videos as possible so i'll leave your comments in the comment section below as always subscribe share this video and i will see you all next time